Hello again, grade eights. In today's lesson, we're going to look at how we can take the net of a three-dimensional object and fold it together to get a three-dimensional object. And we'll also look at the reverse process where we have a three-dimensional object and then we unfold it to get the net of that object. Our learning outcome is to draw and construct nets for three-dimensional objects. Let's start off by talking about what a net actually is. A net is a two-dimensional shape that when folded encloses a three-dimensional object. When I say a two-dimensional shape, it means it could fit on like a piece of paper. It just has two dimensions. So for example, it might just have length and width as opposed to a three-dimensional object, which has length, width, and height to it. So here's an example of a two-dimensional two net. This two-dimensional net is formed by a bunch of squares that are put together, six of them. Now, right now, they're unfolded. What we want to do is if you were to draw these, this net on a piece of paper, in all the spots in the net where you have an edge, like a line segment, you would want to fold along those line segments and then kind of like try to fold the shape so it fits together to give you a 3D shape. Now, I'm going to go to a website to show you this. So the website is GeoGebra, and I'll just show you like an actual animation of, uh, of actually folding this net together. So I'll just end the show here for a moment, and I'll jump over here. All right, so this is my net of my three-dimensional object. Again, it's uh, made up of a bunch of, well, it shows them as rectangles here, but just squares. Now, I'm going to just change the perspective of this a little bit. Okay, just because I'm going to show you what it looks like when I actually take the net and I fold it together. So right now, the three-dimensional object is completely open. When we fold it closed, you're going to see that it very slowly, actually, let's do it the other way around. I'm going to go like this. Okay, so now I'm going to start to close it. So like I said, what you do is when you take the net, you make creases along those edges, those line segments, and then you start to bend them and you end up taking the object and you take the two dimensional net, you fold it together. And then what you end up getting is a three dimensional object. In this case, if you take that net of those six squares and you fold them all together, you end up getting a cube as your three dimensional shape. Okay, let's go back to the PowerPoint. Yeah, so the unfolded net is made up of, two-dimensional net is made up of six squares. And when you fold all those together, then you end up getting a three-dimensional object of a cube. So here's some steps you can follow to form a three-dimensional object from a net. Some people may be able to visualize in their head what it looks like if you fold it together, but if you're not familiar with or if you're not able to visualize that and i don't blame you it's tough to take a net and to like think about what it would look like if you fold all the different things together uh, try to follow these steps though step one you want to take the net and you want to trace it onto some grid paper if you look at the very back of your work booklet i believe the work booklet for the surface area and volume unit you'll have a page that has like grid paper all over it I attached that page intentionally because that's for you to use uh, to sketch nets, uh, to cut out the, 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 the picture of what the shape looks like and to fold if you need it to actually identify what the shape looks like when you fold things together. Okay, so step one would be trace onto grid paper, and then you'd wanna cut along all the outside edges. Okay, cut along, on the along all the outside edges just so you have uh, the actual net that you see. So in this case, uh, I'll just highlight what the outside edges are. So the outside edges would be all the line segments on the outside. So we kind of just trace the outer perimeter of the, uh, of the net, and that would be the, the part of the, the net that you would cut out if you were to draw the shape on some grid paper. Okay, so all the outer edges, outer line segments, you would uh, cut out or cut along those lines. Step three, 
you want to fold along all the inside edges. So the inside edges, and I'll highlight them with, uh, let's do light blue here. These would be all my inside edges. So I have one that's located here. I have one horizontal one that's located here, one that's located here. So you don't want to cut these ones. You want to actually just fold them, make creases along those lines. And if you cut this out correctly, you make the creases along those lines, and then you try to fold the shape together, uh, then you would get your three-dimensional object. If you want your three-dimensional object to stick together, then you have to tape the outside edges together. I don't know if you actually need to do that, because at that point, you probably know what the object looks like. But if you want to keep your three-dimensional object, you would have to tape all the outside edges together. OK, so let's look at this. Uh, form a 3D object from the following net, and then sketch on isometric dot paper. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this object, and I'm just going to sketch it on this grid paper. And like I said, I, I gave you some grid paper uh, on the very back page of the work booklet. Now, I'm going to try to match up uh, the size of the, the net here with the actual grid lines you have. So if we start on this, this, uh, uh, this part of the net on the left-hand side, uh, I'm going to draw it as having a square that goes up by one and across by two. Okay, so that's this one right here. Okay, let's do the, uh, let's go to a different color now. Okay, now let's sketch this part. So this part looks like it's the same, has the same height here, but it just doubled the, double the length. So we're gonna go across by four. And we can sketch the rest of these now. So let's do this one, this top part of the net. Okay, that looks like it's about, I'd say two squares high. So we go up by two squares and then across by four. Okay, you can shade that in and then we'll do this portion that's towards the bottom. So that would also be two squares high and then four across. We have this one right here, this right side one. So that would be two across and one up. And we have one final one, which is this bottom portion. And then we can just draw it like this. Okay, now if you cannot visualize what this would look like if you actually put it together, uh, what you would do is you draw this on the grid paper and then you cut out the shape along all the, the outside edges along the perimeter. And then you make creases or folds along the inside edges and then you simply try to fold the object together. Once again, I'll go back to that G GeoGebra program and I'll show you what this looks like if we actually put it together. Okay, so it's going to end this for a moment. Uh, let's keep this and let's go back to the program and let's go down to here. Okay, so I'll just reorient it just so I have what I had on the example. Okay, so that's what the net of the object uh, pr pretty much looked like. Okay? Maybe not quite the exact same thing, but pretty close. Okay, I'm just going to make it put it at an angle. So then when I start to close the net, we can see what happens. So let's begin to close it. Oh, it's going to be upside down. So let's, uh, let's flip it here. Let's do it like this. Okay, so now let's uh, fold this together. And then what do you get? Well, let's rotate this so we can see it a bit better. You get a rectangular prism. Come on, there's a certain perspective I want here, which I'm not quite getting, which, oh well. Okay, I can see it's a rectangular prism. It's got that box shape to it. Now, back to our example, <clears throat> we need to draw this on, uh, 
isometric grid paper. Okay, so the first spot I'm going to focus on is I'm going to draw this side right here. Okay, now this side uh, has a, I'm going to say it has a height of one unit or one unit, and it has a length of two. So if I go ahead and draw this on the isometric grid paper, I'm going to start off by drawing uh, a height of one, and I'm going to do a length of two. So one, two units across, height of one. Okay, so that's this face. Now, let's then do the sides of this. So we then know that this goes one, two, three, four units across. So we're going to go one, two, three, four across. One, two, three, four across. One, two, three, four across. Okay, and that's the three-dimensional object. That's a rectangular prism, and I've drawn it on the isometric grid paper, which now shows it in three dimensions, because now you can see the length, you can see the width, and you can see the height. As opposed to on the, the net of the object, it's only two dimensions. You can't see the third dimension. Okay, let's do the other way around. So let's say that we have a 3D object and we want to form the net now. Basically, what you would do is you just need to visualize what happened if you took that 3D object and you just cut it open and you flattened it out. Okay, so let's look at uh, two nets for uh, a couple of objects. We're going to deal with in more detail a little bit later in this unit. So the object for part A is what we're going to call a right triangular prism, and the object on the right is called a right cylinder. But again, there'll be more about that later. Okay, so uh, again, the way to, so we're trying to flatten it out now. Uh, now, the way I'm going to visualize this is let's say that this front face, we're going to call this number one, and we're going to call this back face here number two. Okay, the front face is one, the back face is two. So I'll start off by drawing uh, this triangle that represents the front face. So maybe what this would look like is I'm going to start here and I'm going to form a triangle that has these three points as the vertex. Okay, so let's connect the dots and form the triangle. Okay, so this is side number one. Now, when I flatten it out, I need to draw this rectangular surface as side number two. So, or side number, I'll call this, we'll call this one side number three. Okay, so that's going to be this surface. So that surface I'm going to draw as being, let's do one, two, three, four across. And that's surface number three. Now on the other end, we could unfold the rest of that triangle. So we could take triangle number two and fold it out. So then I'm gonna have my vertices here. So let's connect these dots. So we'll call that number two. That's only three of the faces though. So there's still a couple of other faces that we have not drawn. So let me just like illustrate them. I'm just gonna erase uh, all this so we can see it. Okay, there's still a few more faces that have not been drawn here. So uh, let's do green. Okay, so we have this bottom face. So we'll call this bottom face number four. That one I haven't drawn yet. Okay, that bottom face, we could actually draw it as being attached to that other rectangular face. So we'll just make this bottom face go down by two and across by four. 
kind of like that. So that would be face number four. And then the one other missing face is we're missing this, this one rectangular face on the left-hand side. So I'll do that one in blue. Yeah, let's do blue. So it's, uh, we'll call this one number five. Okay, so this face here, okay? That's, that, that's another rectangular face just on the opposite side. Therefore, it would just mirror image what uh, face number four looks like. So we'd have number five that would go up and then like this, call it number five. And again, if you're not totally sure if you did this correctly, just think about this. If you actually cut the shape out and you fold it along the inside edges together, would you get that shape? And yeah, you would. Uh, if you took the shape and you folded one and two inward first, uh, so you folded one and two in, then you would fold four and five to actually complete the triangular prism. Okay, now we've got a cylinder. So I'm just gonna sketch a little bit on the cylinder here because I'm gonna draw, identify my different faces. So let's call this face number one. So this is gonna be the cap of the cylinder, one of the caps. Now we also have a cap at the back. Now I, I can't see the complete circle because like the, the this one curved surface is blocking it. If you wanna show like uh, an edge or whatever behind like the three dimensional object, typically what we do is you draw it with like a dashed line. So you've also got this cap, this circular cap at the back. We'll call that number two. So I'm going to start off by drawing cap number one. Okay, so let's do the cap number one as a circle that must go through these four points. So we'll call that cap number one. If you've ever had like a can of like peaches or something and uh, use a can opener to open it, you can kind of like see like what it would look like if you were to actually, uh, if you were to actually pull that out. So you're going to take both these two caps and you're going to kind of like cut them. You're going to fold them out. Now, what you can do with this other section, so I'll highlight uh, section number three. So that's going to be, oh, let's use a different color. It's a bit brighter, a bit easier to see. Let's do yellow. I'll make it stand out a bit. Yeah, okay. So you've also got this curve segment. And this curve segment here, you can actually flatten out into a rectangle. Again, just think back to that can of peaches. If that like uh, can has like a label on it, you can actually like make a cut along the label and you could pull the label off and then you could flatten it out. So if you flatten that out, then what you would have is now we'll talk about this a little bit more about this later, but uh, the width of the rectangle you're going to fold out actually has to match the circumference of the circle. Okay. So the circumference of the circle here uh, does need to be like what the full width is. So uh, I'll just do it in a different color. So let's go to green. Okay, so the length of this label is going to match the circumference of the circle. So if I were to take this like middle label, the yellow one, and I unfold it, then it would look like uh, maybe something like this. Okay, it's going to be a rectangular label. Like that. Okay, so that's face number three. I, know, I knew I drew it in yellow up there, but... Uh, I just did that to make the it, it contrast with the dark blue color a bit more. And the key thing here is, uh, again, this circumference of the circle here. This circumference of the circle is actually the length or the width of that side. Okay, So the, this yellow circle is the width of that side. And then to finish off the net, we just draw the other cap on the opposite side. So I'll draw my circle looking like this. Oh, got that vertical line, which I don't want. Get rid of that. Put my pen. Draw my circular cap, and that's face number three. I should point out, by the way, there's that there are lots of different ways to draw nets of three-dimensional objects. So 
Uh, I drew one net for each of, for a sil this cylinder. I drew one net for this triangular prism. There actually are a variety of different ways you can draw the nets for these objects. Okay, so it doesn't have to be like this. There are other nets that if you fold them together, you would still get that three dimensional object. So there's lots of different solutions you can get for these. That's it for this lesson. Uh, you can complete the assignment in the service area and volume notebooklet that's uh, called nets of three dimensional objects. And then in the next lesson, we're going to look at uh, starting to calculate the surface area of these 3D objects, starting with the right rectangular prism. And I'll talk to you then.